no fighting. This girl. This has been my life for the last three days. Out, Millie, no. She's chewing on my couch. Okay, can you not? That's not cool. Okay, I'm not filming here. Okay, I'm gonna film here because it's just too crazy on the couch. So um, if you're wondering why there is a massive Rottweiler in my house who is currently drinking in the background, um, you can watch this vlog. This is my fur niece. Um, I'm babysitting her for a few days. So things have been kind of chaotic around here, which is why I'm deciding to film so last minute. It's about 20 minutes before, before sunset, so I wanna get this first part out of the way before the sun goes down. Um, but yeah. I know that some people get stressed when I'm rushing, but it's a crazy week. I have to get this done today. I thought that I could film tomorrow, realized that I actually have something to do tomorrow, so I have to make it happen today. So what this video is gonna be is essentially my Hoya collection. Um, it's been several months now since Hoya Apocalypse. If you guys know, you know. If you don't know, all you have to do is search Hoya Apocalypse on my channel and you will find out. So I've taken kind of a big break from posting about Hoyas ever since that video because I'm not gonna lie, I was a little scarred, a little traumatized, a little bit frustrated with the whole mealybug, flat mite situation, but I've sort of come out of that now and I am in a better headspace. The mealybug situation has been essentially a completely eradicated in my um, in my cabinet. I only have one plant right now that I saw mealybugs on like three weeks ago. But other than that, I mean, it, it just kind of went away. So I'm grateful for that. Ow, she keeps tackling me. So anyway, um, this video, I'm just going to, Millie, I'm going to just do like a quick montage of the entire collection because I'm not gonna talk about every plant in depth. And then once the montage is over, we will head into the plant room and I'll feature maybe six to eight Hoyas that I wanna just talk about in depth. Um, and yeah, that'll be it. Oh, and I'll show you inside of the Hoya cabinet as well. Maybe after the montage, I'll kind of show you what it looked like before I ripped everything out, as you can, I think, see behind me. Yeah, so anyway, let's just get started because it's 20 minutes until sunset out and this dog is biting my butt. Millie, Millie. Um, ow! Ow, she keeps biting my ass. So, she always does that. She puts her nose right between my crotch.
feel like that was absolute chaos. Um, Vince and I have been contemplating getting a second dog and I think what this experience has taught us is that one, Pudge is great with dogs, other dogs and loves to play, but he definitely has a cap. He's not a puppy anymore and um, I think he just prefers to be a single child or an only child and also we definitely do not have the capacity in our schedules to care for two dogs, let alone a dog that has a lot of energy. Um, not that we would have adopted a puppy, I think we would have adopted like, you know, rescued or something. But either way, I just, yeah. I'm kind of glad that we took on this babysitting thing because it's just, yeah. It's been very eye-opening and it's so hard to film with two dogs. So I'm just like, I'm exhausted. But um, anyway, I forgot to mention this in the intro, but you would have known obviously by the title. This is, this is essentially part one of three of the 2023 houseplant tour. The idea of doing an all-encompassing houseplant tour video in one video seemed really daunting and it probably would have been like a five hour video. So I decided to break it up into three parts. This part obviously are my Hoyas. Part two is going to be um, my plant room plants. And then part three is going to be my living room plants and my bedroom plants. So anywho, um, we are obviously in the plant room now and I've pulled I think about six plants that I'm going to show you guys today. So. Let's just start with the closest one. This is a Hoya, I don't know if I'm saying this right, Erith, Erithrina, Erithrina. Um, I picked this up from Lauren, or she actually gifted this to me. It was a three leaf cutting, or maybe it was a, no, it was a two leaf cutting. I got this leaf and this leaf from her. Um, and this one plus all of these pushed out in my care. Um, I already knew I was going to like this leaf or I was going to like this plant because one of the color, um, very, very dumpstery and it just, it looks really like crusty and nasty. Is it focused? <laughs> Please, I can't deal with this today. Um, maybe I'll show you these top leaves. So like you can tell it sort of has, um, I mean the older leaves sort of have like a texture to the edges, like they're a little bit... Um, you know what I mean whereas the new ones are a bit more straight and not as like jagged but still very dumpstery and cute I really love how like the venation is super dark it's super thin but then it has like these little teeny tiny splashes of white and it's just so stinking adorbs um, I will say that the new leaves look I would say significantly less crusty than the older ones, but I do think it's growing conditions. Um, it's still in the original, wait a second. Wait a second. This is still in the original vessel that I got it from, I, that I got, that I got it in. And these are Jing's. Did I get this from Jing or Lauren? Oh my gosh, I can't even remember anymore. Um, that just goes to show like how many Hoyas my friends throw at me. But um, either way, I'm so glad that it ended up in my house because I do really, really love it. It's got kind of a strange growth pattern right now. It's not quite long enough to like completely trellis around, but I think we'll get there. This little runner dude is seems like he wants to do things, but yeah, this has just been like a really, really cool plant. Um, the abaxials of them are quite cool as well. And yeah, I, I haven't... Sorry, I think that was... Millie's getting restless in her crate. I don't remember if I've ever shown this on my channel. I might have like quickly, like briefly shown it, but have never done a feature. So it's not that this plant has stood out to me as like, oh my gosh, this growth is just so incredible, so amazing. But I just wanted to feature it for the first time because I have grown to appreciate this foliage um, and I'm just glad to see growth on it at all. I definitely need to repot it though because it is just in perlite. All of the roots are coming out of the bottom and it's just, it's in a bad sitch. But <laughs> regardless of the neglect, she, yeah, she's growing for me. And of course, I have to plug ar the architrelluses. These are from Propagation Diaries. They are beautiful. Um, I love them very much. This is obviously the like mirror, mirror, 
skew um, and it has sulfur dust or like sulfur spray all over it which is why it looks um, speckly but uh, yeah anyway first one Hoya Arith Erythrina all right um, I think the next one I'm gonna show you is I'll just I'll do this one because I feel like some people might be wondering so during the Hoya apocalypse I unfortunately killed both of my clemenciorums which probably was the hardest pill for me to swallow it was the one that I was the most sad about. Um, I really loved my Clemenciorums. They were both gifts. And yeah, I just felt, I felt like a failure. But again, my friends, they just come through for me and I can't, um, I can't thank them enough. So you would have seen that I have two Clemenciorums now and I showed them um, side by side just to show you the difference. So this one is from Lauren's plant and this one is from um, Jing's plant. I think one of them might be a Hoya Clemenciorum Thailand, and I think it's this one, but I could be wrong. Um, hopefully I'll be able to fact check with um, Jing before this goes up. I'm back with two Clemenciorums. Um, I am definitely not going to do what I did last time. I am going to cherish these. I'm gonna cherish them and I'm gonna take care of them and protect them. Both of them have um, these long, what are these stems? I need to learn Hoya. Um, lingo I'm just like oh this runner guy <laughs> um but yeah they both look like they're on the move uh they were both propagations and like I think they were fresh cuttings and they both have now rooted into their substrate which is very very exciting I do need to repot this one though because this one dries out like a mother fricker but I'm just so happy to have these dumpstery guys back again because holy smokes if I if I had to pick one ancient dumpster Hoya um, that I could only have in my collection, it would definitely be the Clemenciorum. I do think I like this form a little bit more than this one, and I think it's because I had this one first and I saw it on where Alice owned it first and I just like fell in love with it. And yeah, it's just a little bit darker, the venation isn't so striking, the green is not as bright, whereas this one is just like a freaking reptile but I will say that this this guy like the way that it feels it feels much more ASMR than the other one like you can feel all the veins on this guy and it's really fuzzy it's got like this like micro fuzz almost and it's just a beautiful feeling the edges I mean the edges of this one are really really jagged and sharp too but this one I would say is more prominent and man I swear you can you can cut some salami with this thing, I'm not joking. So I uh, wanted to just kind of get the elephant out of the room. Yes, I have Clemenciorums again. Um, they are not the, you know, the ones that I saved from my, uh, from my other plants. Those ones were like toast. It, like the stem mushed up, the roots mushed up, like there was no saving it. So I am glad to have uh, replacements and Trust me, these guys, they're gonna be they're gonna be protected like no other this time. Sorry, my child is throwing a tantrum. He thinks someone's at the door and no one is at the door, so I'm very confused. And I hope he doesn't rile up Millie. I think he's done throwing a tantrum. So we're gonna continue on to the next one. I know this one is not technically a Hoya, but it's a cousin of the Hoya. This is a Deshidia hirsuta. I... I posted this on um, my Instagram last year for the first time, I think. Not even on my feed, it was on my stories. And I woke up to so many messages asking what the heck this is and if I was selling any cuttings. Um, and I, I mean, I guess, I, I guess I didn't expect it to be such a hot thing, but, um, I guess not many people know about it, but yeah, this is a Deshidia Hirsuta. It is beautiful, it's fuzzy, it's coin-like, and it's just, it's such an easy plant. I think this is my favorite Deshidia, particularly for the texture of this plant. Um, it is sort of like 
the Hoya Clemenciorum with fuzz, with more fuzz, I should say, and it's just the cutest little thing. And even the stems have fuzz on it. The, the whole thing is fuzzy, minus the roots, of course. But I've just found this one to be really, really easygoing, has not required much from me. It's in the most algae-ridden vessel that you'll ever see. And yeah, I just love it so much. So it's interesting because some of the, uh, the, the leaves, if you look at these ones up here, they're like hollow. And when I tell you I have never been so tempted to squish a plant before, like my cute aggression is activated and I just want to squish it. But obviously I won't. I have self-control. I have some, like, some restraint, but my blood pressure definitely like rises um, when this plant <laughs> is in my hands. But then if you look like down here at some of the newer leaves, like they're completely flat. There's like no sort of, there's nothing inside of it. It's not like a little puff ball like this guy. So I'm not quite sure if that's a maturity thing or if it's a conditions thing, but I kind of wish that some of these leaves would puff up. Um, I've, I've had some of the like odd leaves here and there. Like if you look at this strand right here, all of them are flat except for one leaf. This leaf right here is a little puff guy. And I just, yeah, I, I don't know enough about this plant to like, you know, know what's going on. I just have it in my house and, and grow it. Um, but it's definitely a fun one. I feel like if you're into the trailing plant, if you're into Hoyas, um, if you're into Ripsalis, like kind of like weirdo plants like that, that you will find this one really, really interesting and you'll find it really low maintenance as well. So I, I think of all of the plants that I'm gonna show you in this little feature, this is the one that I would recommend the most. Um, you don't need a cabinet, doesn't need a lot of warmth, doesn't need a lot of light. This one is just living on my, um, you know my clear acrylic Ikea shelves in the living room? not getting a ton of light and she's just grown like a champ so i do need to repot her at some point i think i'll probably do that on camera but yeah this should be her suta she's a she's a good one to have this one is one of my newer acquisitions i actually think this is the most recent hoya that i've gotten and this is the hoya thompsonii I can't remember if I featured this in a week of plant to-dos, but I recently got this from Alice as a larger plant. I actually chopped it up into four pieces. I have three, I have two other propagations that I'm gonna give to my mom and my sister. This one is my plant, and then I gave a small piece back to Alice. Um, this one was a wishlist Hoya for so long. I didn't even know that Alice had it, seriously. I've had this on my wishlist since like 2021, but I love it because it's so, fuzzy like it's really really fuzzy not like a micro fuzz it's like a fuzz fuzz um and i honestly didn't even know that the leaves got this big i thought they were i i guess the photos that i saw they were all like very coin like and really tiny like this um so i was surprised when she gave me this plant and some of the leaves were were this big but pleasantly surprised i will say um, and the fuzz sort of have like a brownish tint to it. It's not like a white fuzz. It's like this like beigey, caramelly fuzz that you can really see in the light. And it's just so fun to touch. I love this plant so much. The leaves are super, super stiff and rigid. I think that's one of my favorite things about Hoyas. It's, it's interesting because like with my aeroids and stuff, I go for the ones that like are really soft and like pillowy and you know, it's very ASMR that way. But with the Hoyas, like I really love when they're just like stiff and rigid and they're like these flat rocks and they're just, oh, they're just so delicious and delightful. So yeah, this one actually rooted pretty freaking fast in um, tree fern fiber. Someone had mentioned in one of my Q and A's if I had ever rooted something in tree fern fiber and they were like, I highly recommend it. It roots so fast, like roots like a hot dam and they were not lying. So yeah, if you are struggling to root your Hoya Thompsonii, I highly recommend tree fern fiber. I've mixed mine in with some perlite and a little bit of pawn. And yeah, things are going swimmingly. So super stoked to have this one in my collection. Thank you again, Alice. It's just, yeah, I'm I'm just really happy that I finally checked this off my wish list. And every time I see it, I get so happy. And um, I can't wait until this grows more. I think I do want to have it as like a trailing plant rather than something that's growing on a trellis. Sorry, she's crying. Um, but I feel like we have a long way to get there. So, but I'm patient. I'm patient. Millie's crying. Um, we'll see how long I can hold her off for. I, I just, it, 
it's a long story, but I can't have the kids running around by themselves. I can feel my S's, they're sharp right now. And Benji told me to hydrate my mouth and it helps. So I'm just like trying to hydrate. The next one that I'm gonna show you is this reverted Hoya um, Wilbur Graves. Oh my God, she's upset. Um, so this is the Hoya Wilbur Graves, a reverted one. Um, it's usually much more silver. But, um, I mean, I had no freaking clue what this was when Jing purged it. I just saw the leaf and was like, mine, yep, mine. And I just loved how speckly it is and look how dark the leaves are. Like, this is like the most precious thing. It always reminds me of like, I don't know, like, like a galaxy. <laughs> so freaking corny. But it is, it's so cute. They're like little tiny stars. And I just love the like contrast between the really dark leaf and these like really silvery, spots and I really love the leaf shape. It's just adorable. I, I I actually think I enjoy it more than like the non-reverted Wilbur Graves. She's trying to break into this plant room. So yeah, I, I just wanted to feature this one because again, I can't remember if I ever showed this on my channel before, but um, I mean, she's in my house, I own her. And she's actually growing quite fast. So it took a while to like get the root system established, but once it got going, it started pushing out growth like crazy. So pushed out this leaf. This is like the only leaf I've grown in my care, but like this runner guy is really long and it's pushing out another growth point down here with four leaves on the way. Um, and then there's one, two, three leaves on the way up here. And yeah, it seems like it's starting to get established now, but I'm just like in love. I'm in love with these leaves. I, I keep trying to photograph it, but I'm just having a hard time like capturing how pretty it looks in real life. And every time I go to take a photo of it, I'm like, uh, I'm not going to post it because it's just not, it's just not as nice. So I think I just have to like get it in the right light and do a little bit of photo editing to get it to look more what it looks like in person and because these leaves are so shiny it always catches some of the glare and it like washes out how like dark and beautiful this leaf actually is it's also hard to tell but there is like very very slight venation to this leaf so you can kind of see in the light there how it's sunken in a bit and it's a little darker and it's just so cute it's like um it's like one of those like you know like holographic cards or something where like you turn it and then you see different things it's kind of like that. Like I never even noticed that it had that until I really, really looked at it closely. So yeah, quick little feature on this guy. I am very, very excited to see how much this grows in the next few months. Um, but I definitely think she is going to be ready for a trellis sometime soon because she's, she's looking a little crazy. Third to last is this Hoya Polynura. I have been wanting this plant for a very long time. Um, the first person that I ever saw had it was actually my sister and I was like, what in the heck is this? Um, it was just like the cutest thing and hers was like a big basket of it and I don't know why I never took a cutting from her. Why didn't I ever take a cutting from her? Maybe I forgot, but um, otherwise, yeah, I, I actually got this one from my friend Erin. She had a much larger plant. Um, she gave me a couple pieces. I gave some to Alice. I gave uh, some pieces. I think I gave some to my mom and I just kept one plant for me. This is a new growth point that grew in my care. So these are really the only two leaves that have grown with me. Oh, and these two as well. But it's just so stinking cute. I can't wait till she's like actually trailing because she's a little weird right now. She's just kind of sitting straight up. I am a little bit worried about like this petiole breaking though, cause it's kind of heavy, sorry. She's been chewing my rug. She already gnawed like a huge hole in the center of my rug, which is very expensive. Um, so I just have to like keep my ears peeled on her. So. Um, yeah, I am worried about this breaking um, because this, I don't know, it just seems so delicate and the stem isn't all that thick. Like it doesn't have like that barky layer around it that would make it really secure as a trailing plant. So a little worried on that front, but 
Otherwise, once this thing does get going, I think I'm going to move it to my plant shelf in the living room because I would just love to see this uh, trailing guy with my anthurium. I think it would be way more appreciated out there than inside of this tent. Also, this thing, um, because it's growing like this, it's kind of shading the plants down at the bottom and it's not they're not getting a ton of light. So I think either way, I'm going to have to move this out um, eventually. But kind of like a highlight on some of these leaves, if you've never seen a holly... Why do I always call it a holly polyneura? A hoya polyneura. Um, so the leaves are not super thick. They're not rigid like a lot of hoya leaves out there. It does have a bit of bend to it. Pretty soft, pretty thin. Um, I wouldn't say as thin as like a hoya coriaceae. Coriacea? Oh, freaking. I don't even know how to say it. The venation is pretty prominent, but super, super like delicate and subtle at the same time it's got these little teeny tiny splashes of um like silver silver and yeah it's just a really freaking cool hoya like honestly i think it's one of the coolest hoyas out there and it has the nickname as the fishtail hoya because it literally looks like a fishtail and it's just so cool i feel like of all of the trailing Hoyas. I would say that this one is probably my favorite and you would have seen that I do have another one, the Hoya Polyner Broguette? Broguet? Broguette? The frick, how do you say it? Um, but I think I still like this one a bit better. Uh, this one is just classic green, just all the right features. It is, uh, yeah, it's an incredible plant. She is up to no good out there. Okay, we're gonna blast through these last two quickly because I do not trust that puppy being out there by herself. Second to last one is what I like to call my Hoya weapon. Um, this is the Hoya undulata. This is probably the crustiest of all of my Hoyas in my collection. If you guys remember, I got this as like a five leaf cutting from Lauren. We weren't sure if it was dead or alive. Um, because it was so crusty and dumpstery. It sort of had this weird like fungally thing going on, like a lot of like yellow marks and stuff. Uh, I want to say three of the leaves at the bottom dropped shortly after I brought it home and repotted it. But once it got rerooted, it, you know, really got going again. All of these leaves up here have grown in my care as well as this one here and I will just never get over how magical these new leaves are. I can't really quite put my finger on the texture of this plant. It's not it's not like many other Hoyas out there. Um, so if you look at where is my if you look at the Hoya Wilbur Graves, like you can see how much more shiny it is than the Undulata. The Undulata has a very very distinct matte texture um but really like sort of silky and smooth at the same time um again very hard to like put your finger on it. it's almost like satin these leaves down here are pretty thick and like rigid like i can't really bend it whereas these ones are a bit has a bit more give um, I'm not sure why maybe again growing conditions i am not the person to talk to about hoyas but um, the, leaf sh the leaf size definitely sort of stayed and it's just so crusty and delicious. And I just, again, I love the texture of this. It almost looks like it would be velvety in person, but it's not. It's very like satiny and smooth and you just have to feel one in person. I definitely recommend this plant if you're into the dumpstery Hoyas, but I will say if you are sort of pressed for space um i wouldn't recommend it because the leaves get so large and i feel like this thing is going to start like popping off any second because i can see two three three uh leaves on the way and i know that might not seem like a lot but like imagine three of these all coming out at the same time it's a bit much it is a bit much um, this runner up here was facing downward. I only recently staked it back up, but you can see when it was facing down, it just started to like die off. And I, I think this was actually going to be a peduncle, and I think I might have accidentally killed it, which is more a blessing in disguise because you guys know that I hate Hoya flowers. So yeah, worked out for the best. But anyway, um, wanted to show you guys this probably one of my favorite Hoyas in my collection right now and Noe has found the sleeper. 
This is all I've been hearing since since Friday. It's just squeaking. All right, we're down to the last one. Um, I wanted to save the best for last. My Hoya Nicholsonia New Guinea Ghost. You guys know that I couldn't do a Hoya feature without showing this one. Um, she's just... Like she starts chewing on it and chomping the second I start talking. She's just come a long way. I got this one as a two leaf cutting and it has just exploded. And I love how sort of like compact it's growing. It's like this little bush and I'm obsessed with it. Like, I don't know. I feel like these are like one of the most magical Hoyas out there. Like if you are into like silvery Hoyas and it's not really quite silvery. It's like this really, really like bright sea foamy green rather than like a silver. Um, and I love, love how some of the leaves have these little like paint mark splotches of dark green. And I kind of wish more of these um, would have it, but it's been more of this like really light green color. Uh, this leaf is brand new right here. It's still hardening off. Um, some of the new leaves have been really big. Like this one right here was like particularly larger than the rest of them. Growing in no drainage, in pond. I do fertilize this one pretty regularly because it's like basically always growing. And I can see a couple new leaves on the way. It looks like we've got about two, four, six seven I can see I can see seven um, new leaves that are starting to pop off and I'm not I'm really not surprised this thing is just always growing and really does not require much I don't know what the difference is between the first cutting that I got that died and this one but obviously I'm glad to be on the other side of it now because she is just as magical as Jing said that she would be and uh, yeah so stoked to have this one. I, I would say this is again another one of my favorite Hoyas in my collection. So today's filming was a bit chaotic. Um, I was gonna wait to film this until she left, but honestly, I just, if, if I didn't uh, film it today, we would have had no upload for Saturday. So I hope I did these Hoyas justice. I am just very glad that I'm no longer feeling very bitter and sour about my Hoya collection. I have acquired quite a few of them since the Hoya apocalypse, which I'm really grateful for. I can't even think of like who I actually bought in my it, like from all the new ones. I feel like they were I feel like they were all gifted to me from friends. So I just, yeah, I feel really lucky in that way, but they are sort of exploding out of this cabinet. Um, I do have to get everything back in, obviously. I think I want to start transitioning some of the trailing ones outside because I don't really think they need the cabinet. I would much rather see them on a daily basis um, out there and just keep, you know, the, the ones on trellises and stuff in the cabinet. So. Anywho, um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope maybe you found a Hoya that you are into or a Dishidia that you're into that you might want to get. Thank you to everyone who has donated to my Hoya collection. You guys are amazing. I'm going to go because this squeaking is going to drive me crazy. But thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to tune in probably next week or the week after for the part two of my houseplant tour. It's not going to go up consecutively just because they are going to be very long videos. The next two one the next two videos. If you have any questions for me, as usual, please leave them in the comments and I will try and get back to you. Thank you, thank you for watching. If you liked it, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up because it helps us a lot on YouTube and I will see you in the next one.